Hey guys, it's Jim Bounds of Co-op Motor Works and Motorhome Rehab Ranch on Patreon. Ranch hands. <clears throat> so it's winter. We got the sun on us a little bit here in Florida, so it's a little warm. Had a big question about where in the heck did the quad bag system come from and what was the progression? Or where did all this rear suspension come from and why did we do it? Damn good question. Oh, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, original airbag, Firestone came up with a wonderful idea. One airbag to run two wheels. Brilliant. And you got to give them credit for for 35 years, they made this airbag just for the GMC folks because it wasn't ever used for anything else. So when they stopped producing it, when did they stop? Well, this has to be built on a single jig built like this. And there's one old guy knew how to do it. Firestone unfortunately moved that plant to South America. They, didn't, they couldn't move the tool and the old dude that knew how to use it didn't want to move to South America. Besides, the tool was getting worn. The last few bags they made, you could tell that the mold lines were getting a little bit uh, distorted. So they stopped producing it. Right away, everybody came out with a raft of airbags with brackets on the sides and stuff. But see, the reason that this airbag was, so, was used and so special is there's a roller on each side. Okay, none of the other airbags did that. Some of them had one, I showed you in another video, but this was a unique airbag. Okay, and if you replace this with a bag that doesn't have cones on it that goes from side to side, that's too much lateral movement. So, what are we going to do? Well, way back, way back, Lee Harrison, IDEN Corp in uh, Richmond, Virginia came up with this. This is a single quarter inch steel appliance. Airbag goes on here, one on here, okay? And what this thing would do is it would set right up in there, pins go in here, airbags here, and there it is. Now, if you have one of these in your coach, it's probably uh, gold zinc. This guy wanted it painted black, so we cleaned it all up and painted it black. All right, I put in a blue million of these, and uh, they work real well. But you know, when you do something enough, you find how to improve it. And the problem with this thing, now, I say problem. All ashtrays hold ashes. <laughs> Some ashtrays do a better job than others. This appliance was quarter inch steel, all uh, welded together. And to put it on, you had to literally pop it into place. These two pieces would bend out just a little bit, just enough to pop it into place. It was precision welded. The problem with that is the quarter inch steel here, right here, was not robust enough. And with the airbags with the lateral movement, this thing would bend a little, and these plates would bend up and down just a little bit. Needed to be thicker metal. Also, the airbags that were attached to this, <clears throat> the specification was rated at 100 PSI. You need about 130 PSI to get this unit to go up. And usually what would happen, that 130 PSI would usually kill that old Delco uh, blue cap uh, compressor and then you get a new compressor. But, <clears throat> you know, when you do this enough, like I said, you come up with a new idea. Come on over here, I want to show you what we, the original prototype, I guess you want to call it, or uh, interim system that we designed before the quad bag, okay? Come on over here. Now look at this baby. <clears throat> you can see here, we lifted it. This was originally where the airbag was. We lifted it a good four inches. Why? 
because the air pressure needed went from about 135 down to where the specifications were for this. So they need to be lifted. If you are using good, these are old, old nasty old Goodyear's, but Firestone's, Goodyear's, Continental's, or um, airlift bags, if you put the center post here, it's going to take 135 pounds. If you put the center post of the bag up here, it's going to be less pressure. And that's what we wanted. Another thing we wanted is in between here. If you remember that original one, it was a two inch gap in here. There's a 90 degree fitting in there and you say, well, damn, excuse me. And there's a 90 degree elbow in here and that thing starts leaking. The whole thing has to come apart. And that's true. So we, we added double length to get in it. Sounds good, right? Problem was it wouldn't go down far because this spread the bags out a little bit. So it went too far. We're saying, well, heck, how do we get them together? All right, here's what we did. We turned them around. If you see here, the airline comes out the outside. This could go right together. That drops it down. Then this was originally made out of quarter inch. We made the quad bag out of three eighths steel, not the quarter inch and not one appliance. It's two pieces. I'll tell you what, come on inside and let me show you the, the quad bag system. Now you can see the progression was from the original airbag system to four bag system. Then we found the problems with that. We tried to make something answer that problem. And then we came up with how to do it. Come on inside, I'll show you. All right, inside. <clears throat> and guys, I don't want this to be another referendum thing like, you need a quad bag. No, you need to spend more money. Oh, I like this one. I like that. It's not about that, guys. It's about what's safer, what's safer for you, and what updates your suspension. Please. I, I, I don't want to be on sides of this or that or whatever. And, you know, and this is one of the things people seem to... to do. <clears throat> but the reason we're supporting this, we helped design this. All right. Now look, you saw all the stuff I showed you before. This is three eighths inch steel. Okay. Not quarter. And there's a back panel with a plate with one airbag connected to it. And there's a front panel with a plate with an airbag connected to it. And those two go in, and they're bolted together. <coughs> now, any engineer will tell you, two pieces of steel together will be stronger than one. Okay? Now, have you noticed we don't have any gap anymore from the original system or from that, that updated thing we tried? No gap. That way, the system will go down and up as much as possible. Number two, you can see it's lifted not the four inches we did there, because if you go too low in pressure, like some of these uh, bobs, big old bags, 40 and 50 pounds, then you start getting this marshmallow thing where it starts to bounce. So we figured, we found that two inches, we figured that two inches was about right. So there's a plate here, lifts it two inches, okay? No distance here. Three, it's a not quarter inch steel. Two piece construction makes it easier to, um, to, to work on and all that. And the airbag fitting, that one that I told you always leaked in the middle and you couldn't get to it, is on the outside. Okay? Now, you can't see it, but right up here, each one of these airbags is connected to a valve. And then there's a valve that goes to the air system in the coach. Then there's a Schrader valve on it, a fill valve. We put it up here in the top to get it away from the tires as much as possible. And you can reach your hand in here around the T-skirt and get to it. With this, with the ability to pump one bag up or the other bag or to get air out of them right here, this system will help you change a tire. <clears throat> this system will help you drive if this wheel goes away. Now you say, well, remember that uh, steel bar that I had in the first one we started? You say, well, you can put that in there. You've got to have a wheel to push against. If you don't have a wheel here, and all you have is one wheel there, that bar does you no good. So the safety aspect of this tells you, 
you need backups and all this. And it's always, yes, it's more expensive. Yes, gum, I've got to do this first. Well, I may come back and do that later. Dude, if you don't do a round to it when you get round to it, you'll never do it. I'm telling you. It's the biggest thing I'm fighting right now. I've got more things I'm, that I've got to do because maybe I put a bunch of stuff off, you know? So <clears throat> if you're working on your suspension, rear suspension is real important. And to be able to go up and down, we've had videos about this. It's very important. We've talked about the supply systems. And we've talked about these. But in, in talking about it <coughs> today, I wanted to show you that it wasn't just like, well, let's just do this. No, there was, a, there was years of field testing, people beating it up, finding things that are better, and trying to improve it. And it was all in, within the community, which was a great thing. Jim Kanamata, <clears throat> you got to hand it to him, he came up with the money Let's just say the word, money. Because to have these things gold zinced, to have this structure jigged up and precision welded, to get the airbags, to get the fittings, to get all this stuff together, and to produce it and offer it in a kit form was a wonderful thing. Okay? It was too big of a uh, uh, endeavor for me to do. Uh, and I got to hand it for Jim for stepping up and, and to produce this. In the future, um, there really doesn't need to be an improvement on the, on the rear suspension on these, uh, on these coaches. If we're going to use this original bogey system, this system, and I'm, I'm happy that, uh, to hear anyone that says anything that, that it would make this better. I am all about making things better. But I'm telling you, brother, um, I've seen these things do uh, and help people uh, in ways that, that um, you know, save them. So, <clears throat> there's been a lot of work put into the uh, rear suspension on our GMC. Um, you know, brake jobs cost 50% more on a GMC. You know why? Two more wheels. Six of them. So, it's a big deal. The suspension on these things are a big deal. And having four wheels in the back, people look at that and go, what the heck? We, for five years, we sponsored a, a, a GMC motorhome drag race rally. So we'd pull these things up to the line, and all the people were looking at the back wheels thinking, wow, dualies, you know, that thing's going to really burn. And we burned the front tires off of it. Really freaked them out. <laughs> um, you want to see some of that if you go to YouTube and put in GMC Motorhome Drag Race. You'll see some of that. That was some fun times, too. Well, look, thank you for your support. We're getting bigger every day, getting better every day. Give me some more input. Give me some more ideas. Thank you for this. And uh, we'll see you next time.